Hi there, I'm Java Jim with First Light Equipment. I'm hoping you have a wonderful day today. Today, we're going to start with a series on parts for espresso machines. And you're probably wondering why. I want you to learn about the differences in parts that go into espresso machines and why some parts are more important than others and we're gonna pretty much be creating a series of videos. And today, we're going to talk or explain, explain like we say in New Jersey, how to uh, assess porta filters. okay? Uh, just a little backtracking, back before I got into First Line in 1997, uh, back actually in 1994, I received my first espresso machine and uh, it started with a D and I had this espresso machine when I had guests come over to my apartment, I'd make espresso and be like, yeah, this is great. And everybody would be like sipping the cup and like, this is horrible. Um, it was my first dive into uh, espresso and uh, I learned a lot since then. And on that machine, I still have the original Porta filter and some components from my very first machine. And the Porta filter, as you can see, I have a few of them here. Uh, this Porta filter has an aluminum body and a plastic handle, and it has a little clip here to hold the basket in place because there's no spring inside. So, okay, we have a Porta filter. Now to get into the importance of it. This aluminum is very lightweight. It also swings in temperature greatly. And one of the most important things on any espresso machine, including the ones that have the aluminum, is to make sure that this Porta filter is piping hot so you can't keep your hand on it. That's the most important thing. And what I don't like about the aluminum is they do tend to lose temperature very fast. Once you take it off the machine, insert, load your coffee, tamp, and then make your espresso. There's some very wide variations. Uh, and typically the inside has an aluminum uh, or cheap aluminum lightweight thermal block. Um, and we're, we're starting to see a shift away from that because many customers such as yourselves are becoming educated. So what's also important is the weight, okay? This is kind of a lighter weight and uh, they do range in size uh, on some home models. You'll see the Porta filter, you'll see 43 or 45 millimeter baskets or 47, 49. And you may say, well, I want the more standardized 58 uh, millimeter. The thing is when you have the narrower baskets, okay, let me see if I can get this out with my fingernails and see here there's a spring that holds this into basket into place. What happens is when it's wider, it's usually shallower. Uh, and then customers go buy these deeper baskets with the 58 millimeter. But I've actually pulled some very good shots with the smaller diameter baskets that are very, very deep. So that shouldn't be so much as important as the metal that's used for the Porta filter. Um, so the other thing is you'll typically also see some of these machines with uh, pressurized baskets where there's one hole on the bottom uh, so the problem with that is you could change your grind all you want it's not going to change the flavor profile but it'll pretty much give you espresso good creme all the time or it will be pressurized in the porta filter such as Seiko had in the past and Solus had and most people tend to migrate towards the non-pressurized baskets because when you do change the grind it can impact the flavor profile somewhat to the better after experimenting and i say somewhat to the better so here we have a 57 millimeter this one is by lilith uh, now you may look it's not as deep as the one from the electro porta filter but it does work very very well and as you can see here it's pretty dirty because we actually put these machines through their paces except for this one this machine died over 20 years ago so uh, we have a brass body here, uh, plastic handle, uh, 
and these handles typically last a long time. We barely ever replace the plastic handles. If you notice the spout, uh, dual spout, a lot of times uh, they're going to be uh, not the commercial grade, they'll be narrower on the home models. Commercial grade will have the wider spouts where you are forced to put in two shot glasses or two espresso or demi tasse cups. Here you can typically get one shot glass, typically made of brass uh, here. And you'll also find some porta filters by manufacturers now that are coming out in stainless steel, which have good temperature stability. So when you go to the 58, you have a little bit more metal as well. So you're moving up in uh, the ladder when it comes to porta filters. You typically don't get bigger than the 58 millimeter. Uh, there is one manufacturer who says 60 millimeter, but they're really 58s. They're in Barcelona, Spain. So you will see uh, a slight difference uh, with a company in Spain who's, who call them 60 millimeter. I think it's more of a marketing gimmick than anything else because they're really 58 millimeters when it comes to the basket. So now you also see we have a uh, wood handle. Uh, a lot of folks really like the accoutrement of the wood handle, the feel. Uh, it also, uh, I think it insulates the heat a little bit better, but the downside to the wood uh, long term, not so much short term, uh, the downside is that it will tend to crack and dry rot or dry out and crack. So uh, that's a long term concern for me. And also if you drop it, it's going to nick faster than say the plastic handle. So just keep that in mind that you want to, boy that sounded pretty good. I should be a drummer. Portafilter drummer. Oh yeah. So. I made the videographer laugh on that one. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're looking at the wood because it will uh, get some type of indentation if you drop it. Uh, the other thing that you see is if you look at this port of filter, it's kind of level, wobbles. The dual spouts here, as you see on this Elite, it's kind of an angle a little bit. A lot of companies are going to more of the port of filter handle with the cur little curvature or the ergonomic. So when you're locking it in, it's a little more ergonomically friendly, but also when you're tamping, okay, when you're tamping, it's level to tamp. So that's another uh, design characteristics that have uh, transpired over the years. Now, uh, the little secret is sometimes these baskets are really hard to get out and it really depends on the thickness of the spring. So we call this a portafilter spring inside. Not every portafilter has it. There are certain manufacturers that don't, and those are typically the home lever models, but you will see it on other machines. So if you have a hard time getting it out, get the other basket from uh, the enclosed machine. If you have another basket, take the rim and just pry it open. You can also use a flathead screwdriver, but you may end up damaged when you go with the other basket, like a blind filter basket, which has no holds in it for back flushing or back washing. You basically just pry it against the lips that are right here. Okay, and it'll come out. Now, talking about lips, I call these lips. Others may call it something differently. On a lot of machines, you will see the lips at the nine and three position. However, there are models that have three lips, say at 12, four and eight, or a little differently, or there's other model makes and models machines where you'll have it at one and seven. This is why it's really important when you're looking at um, machines and portafilters. A lot of people think, well, I can just take this portafilter use on this machine. No, you can't especially if there's a different type of setup going on with either the group head or the porta filter on certain makes and models. The other thing that I have learned over the years is the thickness of the lips here. I just learned recently that a manufacturer has 7.5 millimeter lips versus the standard, which is 6.5 millimeter lips on the thickness here. And when they're that thick, you can just barely lock it into the group head. So, and if you take the 6.5 and use it on the group head that uses a 7.5, the porta filter will slide all the way and probably not lock and create a good seal. So this is uh, some insight about the porta filters. If you have any questions or comments, please ask down below. 
I'm hoping you learned something today. If you haven't, please give me a thumbs up because that means I haven't covered it. Just kidding. Just give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And again, if you have any questions, please ask down below. This is Java Jim with First Line Equipment and have a great day.